Uh, the, the point I'm making is that you can meet a woman in a club or a pub, get a bit pissed out of your heads, go home, have consensual sex, and then in the next day she can go to the police station and she can say, uh, I want to report that I've been raped. And you can go to court and you can be done for it, right? And they will say, the lady was too drunk, right? And you can get done for it. <laughs> it's pretty bad, isn't it? <laughs> that is feminism gone insane. Right, next. I was uh, watching one of these TED conferences, okay, or whatever you want to call it. Um, so they've got a two-ton blue. It's two tons. The equipment that it's lifting is two tons. It's going to go 40 kilometres into the sky where the balloon would then explode. It says it's got explosives on it, I didn't understand what for. And the parachute. And they send this up. Uh, but look what it is. What is it? It's a satellite, isn't it? <laughs> So are they um, staying tethered to the ground, some of these balloons? And is this our satellites? <laughs> eh? Could that be the satellites? <laughs> Just... <laughs> oh, and he goes around and he says, he's got a YouTube channel. I'm his first subscriber. I've got plenty of questions for him. He's written a book uh, on, um, you know... The latest science. How they're looking for dark matter in excavated mines, and uh, they're looking for this dark matter in Antarctic rivers, and he's saying that it's the pollution that uh, you know we basically. Just going round to schools and universities. Well, I would say it's basically saying a lot of us have got to go, really. You know. Um, but, is that our satellites? Have we found a culprit? So they spent billions of pounds uh, looking for this dark matter. Massive, massive operations uh, that, like you wouldn't believe. And... Uh, they haven't found any. <laughs> They've been doing it for 20 years. <laughs> but they're going to keep going, you know. Because it's a cash cow. Who's funding this science? The people on the planet. Who's suffering? The people on the planet. Where would the money be best directed? The people on the planet. Where is it going? To projects that aren't producing any results. Whoa, that's, that's amazing, isn't it? Not really, no. That's how it's done, you see. Um, going on about pollution, if you like, right? Um, saying that, oh, we're not going to be able to discover things if we get any more polluted. And then, what? So what? We, we've got to kick the bucket so that you can find out some experiment. Bloody stupid. So... And they go into all this trouble in the most difficult place on earth, putting balloons up into the sky that are supposedly two tons, and I'm on about the uh, the material that's as thin as a sandwich paper, right? Two tons. <sighs> Come on, a two ton balloon, I'd... taking up a two ton what looks like a satellite. Uh, well, all right, fair enough. I'm not arguing, but. Then he's saying, and the pollu you know, the pollution is going to uh, stop us doing, you know, physics and finding out more things about the universe. But you've got the satellites, haven't you? You've got the satellites. You've got um, the Hubbard satellite up in space, haven't you? And yet, all he was looking at in his little talk were ground-based telescopes, and it just made me think. This is all ground-based, isn't it? Everything he's going on about is ground-based because the satellites are looking shadier and shadier the more you look into them, right? They don't stand up to scrutiny. How are they getting them all up there? 
you know, there's 1,500 to 2,500 up there, but no one's got the exact answer. Pardon me. So who's putting all this stuff up there? When did they do it? They also claim that they can go up and maintain these satellites. What? Has anyone seen a satellite circling the planet? No. Will you? No. <sighs> and they're going to try and slit your throat with science, I'll tell you that now. So I'll wake up to that one now. Anyway, I'm going to keep it short. I'm going to come back and do another in a bit. We'll be one.